Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're listening to the Ask Brian Radio Show on KHS 1220 and 98.1 FM. And if you've never listened to the Ask Brian Radio Show, well, you're into a time period where you're going to actually learn something about business, learn a business story, a, a, a business success story, or learn something about business. Our goal here every week is to teach you something about business so that you will become a better and more efficient business owner. And we ha we have we're live every week, Thursdays 1 to 2 p.m. on KHS 1220 and 98.1 FM. Now, for people that have never listened to the Ask Brian Radio Show, um, uh, people always ask the question, the first question I'll ask is, Ask Brian is spelled with an E. And most of the times when I hear the word Brian, it's spelled B-R-Y-A-N, B-R-I-A-N, but I never, ever, ever heard it spelled B-R-I-E-N unless you're talking to someone, Mr. O'Brien from Ireland, okay? But otherwise, I never really hear that name. So the engineer, though, has a couple reasons, and he always tells us why. And yes, we know engineer starts with an E, so we're going to leave that one out today. <laughs> because that's the he one. Took, <laughs> he, took, he took it from me today. I just it's your favorite. That's why I took it away. <laughs> exactly why he took it away. <laughs> now, I'm it, a mean <laughs> person. <laughs> well, the engineer, you can't run the show without the engineer, but no, he takes it away. All Don't right. Don't worry, we have AI. <laughs> We have AI and we have po automated podcasting, so we don't need you anymore. Thank you very much. That doesn't start really with an E. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't start with an E either. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> well, outside of engineer, which is my favorite one, there are a couple of uh, letters or a couple words that, you know. Why we e use the E in Ask Brian as opposed yes. to I-A-N or Y-A-N. Well, there's a couple reasons for that, Brian. One of them is this show has nothing but excellence because – Everybody on this show is excellent. Uh, you have to have effort because everybody gives 110% effort uh, just to, you know, be great and be, you know, the person they are. Next one would be uh, empathy because uh, unlike Mr. Uh, Brian Johnson over here was <laughs> not very empathetic with, you know, the whole engineer thing. But what does empathy mean, sir? Empathy, uh, stepping into someone. we like to teach. We're like Sesame Street here. <laughs> What's <laughs> empathy? Empathy is the word of the empathy, day. Empathy, word of the day. <laughs> means Not good for narcissists, <laughs> but go ahead. It <laughs> means stepping into someone else's shoes, which he, you know, didn't step in. He stepped on my shoes in that case. But <laughs> that's neither here or there. Uh, the other but one if you're in someone else's shoes, A, you have to be able to fit in those shoes. That's also true. And B, you have to make sure that where those shoes stepped. Very, very true. <laughs> and then, uh, was there a new one? <laughs> Wasn't there a new one we're going? We're going easy. Okay, well, hold on. Hold on. The most important word and letter a the is experts. Because you have Finally to. Finally, he got it. Well, Put down the uh, balloons. <laughs> do the. Do, 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 do. <laughs> he got it. I'm even going to throw you some peanuts today. You don't have any. <laughs> I'm, I'm hungry. And by the way, what 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 animal eats a lot of peanuts? Uh, um, also begins with an E. <laughs> elephant. <laughs> he replaces engineer with elephant today. Oh my gosh. <sighs> wow. Wow. Shots fired today. Wow. 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 So we do have an excellent show today. Uh, the last thing we wanted to go over was the S. Brian website. That's again at ASKBRIEN. Dot com and if you go to the website there are two benefits of that one is we have a business community and the business community allows business uh, owners in the same industry to ask other business owners a question so if you own a uh, a, a parking lot in in New Jersey and you own a parking lot in Savannah Georgia you might have the same issues relating to parking lot now there may be some regulations and rules specific to that state and that's that's a different issue what we're talking about is hey some guy parked his car here and he died what do i do with the car okay that's a good question that may <laughs> <laughs> that may be different from state to state regulatory wise but there are the same questions and then we have experts now how many hours does an expert need mr engineer you need at least what is it about ten thousand hours at the very least to, to be considered. Well, that's not that that is a re that is not a necessary mandatory requirement. It's a permissive re requirement. Basically, you could have less than ten thousand hours if you're an expert, like like Tracy or like our guest Nikita. They have other expertise, and so they don't necessarily need the ten thousand hours. But if you have ten thousand hours, we divide it by forty hours a week. 
50 weeks a year is 2,000 times five years. After 10,000 hours, you may qualify to be an expert. An expert is allowed to post videos, blogs, et cetera, et cetera, on the sbrian.com website. Check it out, guys. It's a really good place to go. And without any further ado, we're going to announce our co-host, my co-host, Ms. Tracy. Long to force. I don't know what. Hello. I don't know what he's doing. There. He's like playing with the sounds or something. Like he was going to do something. I don't know what he was doing. I don't know, but I wonder did you indeed. notice my new pick? Yeah, there did she is. I pick? see. Wow. <laughs> looks looks fantastic. I love it. I have to be careful what I say now. But <laughs> and by the way, I what? heard I heard of, I heard this very very interesting honor that you have. You are going to be uh, speaking somewhere. Where are you speaking? Yes, thank you so much. So I'll be speaking at the Podcast Movement Conference. It's the largest podcasting conference, at least in the U.S., maybe beyond. And typically it's an in-person event, but this year it, they are doing a great job of making it a virtual event, and it starts October 19th. And so, yeah, I'm very excited about it. I'm presenting on Stop the Glorification of Busy, How to Keep Your Passion and Still Keep Podcasting. <laughs> so. Well, we're going to talk about that at least in one episode between now and then and if people do want to get tickets to that how do they go about that they can go to podcastmovement.com or podcast movement on social media or you can uh buy, go to my social media tracy to forge super 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 so without any further ado we're going to in in interview our guest and again he's playing with the sound button so apologize here are you still playing with it when you stop playing with it then we'll announce our guest doctor Nikita Patel! Are you there? Hi. Hi, how are you? Thank you for having me. Good afternoon. Well, good I afternoon. I just want to apologize in advance that you didn't know that he was going to do that. Well, actually, I told him. No, I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> So, people that don't know, uh, doc, is, is it okay to call you Dr. Patel, or wh wh how do you like me to uh, to address you? Well, actually, I'm not a doctor. I actually have my master's in science in clinical nutrition, and I'm a registered dietitian. And just to go over the the experts that you were talking about, I do have my my certification in diabetes education, and I had over 2,000 hours of clinical contact with my patients so uh, you're in good hands today with a nutrition expert well very very good and now you, you're going to tell me what type of juice i should drink because all juice has natural sugar and i don't know which one to drink but let's go over a little bit about your background so you are you have your master's in nutrition and um we are nutritionists for a number of years how, how did you start your career well, um, I actually started my, my undergraduate degree in marketing and communication, and um, I actually switched over to nutrition. I went to NYU for the nutrition program, and I ended up doing my registered dietitian exam, so I'm certified, and it's just been a great experience working with people and helping them maintain their optimal health. And, and so are you in private practice, or how, how did, what happened there? I was in private practice. Um, when I was in private practice, uh, I, well, first I started off in a clinical setting. I was working in health centers. Then I moved over after a couple years of that into private practice. And during my private practice, I started incorporating holistic nutrition in the field of Ayurvedic sciences. Um, and that's where it kind of led to me to where I am today with my wellness beverage company. Okay, so before we go there, uh, I just want to go over some things. So homeopathic, my understanding understanding is kind of natural, not using medicines from the pharmaceutical companies, but trying to use natural elements or natural items. Uh, is that correct or am I off base? Um, yes, that's when you're extreme. I'm, I'm the kind of girl who's more of the east meets west, so I believe in medicine. There's times to use medicine, but I believe in um, Eastern practices as uh, health maintenance or, or disease prevention. Does that make sense? Okay, so I don't want to spend too much time, but I want to, people don't understand necessarily the difference between East and West. West I consider to be medical, whereas East is more of a spiritual concept, but w <coughs> wanting to be a little bit more specific on that issue. 
So um, I'm referring to Ayurveda, which is the science from ancient India. So if anybody's heard of Chinese medicine, um, Ayurveda kind of falls into that category. So in Ayurveda, you, you look at food as medicine. It's not just a spiritual aspect. It's looking at food as medicine. If I eat healthy foods, if I take care of my body, I can do, prevent diseases. So that's the concept that we're going with, with Ayurveda. And uh, with that, um, uh, that is uh, more of a, a non-medical doctor, non-pharmaceutical concept, correct? It's basically just the food that you're eating that's going to determine your health. Is that correct? Well, there's other practices as well incorporated with it, but um, I'm, I'm, as a dietitian and nutritionist, I focus just on the food aspect of it. Okay, and then... Uh, so you opened up your own nutritional practice and you were seeing, I believe, clients or patients, correct? And then what happened? Correct. How did you decide, you know what, uh, food and drink is, 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 is where I want to be? Well, a lot of my clients were asking, like, they're just tired, they're fatigued, they wanted to learn more about weight loss. And so I approached them with, like, a different concept setting it at the time of doing like a gentle detox. So I was preparing these detox programs with them with my drink and they kept coming back for the drink. And the more that they drank my my blend, the more that they were getting health benefits. So that's where that's where the idea of bottling it and getting it to mainstream came about. Now did you um when you had this, uh, first of all, how did you come up with this drink? I mean, is it something that you had borrowed from somebody else, or did you create it yourself? And, and that's the first question. And if you did create it yourself, then how did you, uh, you know, how did you come up with it? And if you didn't create it yourself, how, how did you, how did you get it? So when I was studying Ayurvedic nutrition, our our teacher kind of gave us these loose guidelines on how to make this detox drink. The drink is designed to help cleanse and repair the liver. So the recipe that we were given was kind of just very general, like a handful of this, a squeeze of that. And so what I did is that I started making it. Made it, I was able to perfect the taste, so it was really palatable. But on the flip side, my clients were getting a really great health benefit from it. So I knew that I had a winner at that point. And did you alter it, or did you keep it the, w the way you had it? Have you made any alterations? Um, can you repeat the question? Did you alter it? So, for instance, you had this recipe or something. Did you alter that recipe, mm -hmm. add in different things to it? And how did you know what to add, and, and how, how did you find something that worked? It, it, it was, I was guided through the, the, the drink process through through my education on what would work together. Um, in Ayurveda, food combinations is very important, and that's where you get the, the concept of what works together. So um, instead of just saying, okay, let me take turmeric independently, it's like let me take turmeric with something because now it, it'll enhance the bioavailability of all those different nutrients that I'm eating the turmeric with. So that's the concept of Ayurveda. The, the drink itself, like I said, was um, introduced to me, but it was introduced as, okay, lemon, mint, turmeric, cardamom, water, but she never said how much, and that I, I created the combination of how much. And, uh, of each ingredient. And, and when did you do that? I think the first time I did this, I was doing a corporate wellness session for Thomson Reuters in 2013, and that's when I knew that I, I, I was onto something with the drink. Because again, all the all the all of the all of the um, the participants in the program, they were like, "Oh, can we get the drink? Is there any more of that drink left?" And so I was just like, "Oh wow, I think I really nailed it with the flavor." And what, what kind of flavor is it? It's really pleasant. It's um, lemon, fresh squeezed lemon juice. Um, it's infused with fresh mint, turmeric, cardamom, and maple syrup, as well as water. So it has a nice um, lemon mint taste with like a little hint of like um, um, turmeric and cardamom. And, and the maple syrup doesn't make it too sweet? No, the maple syrup is actually, I'm glad that you brought it up, it's actually a functional ingredient that helps with the healing process for the body. So it, it, it gives it a nice pleasant taste, but it's not overwhelming by any means. So if you're not into, if you're into like mild drinks, this is like the perfect drink. It's not sweet, it's not bland, it's just right. 
And uh, so, how, how do you make? How do you mass produce something like that? Because it's it's one thing to have that drink and okay, I made that concoction at home for my kids, but you know, mm -hmm. to mass produce it, it's a little bit more complicated. So I got really lucky because I did start small. I actually rented a commercial kit do small batches because again as my clients were asking for it like weekly I was doing weekly batches for them um, instead of just like single single like detox programs I was making weekly for them so I'm like I need to be in a commercial kitchen so I, I rented out a small space and I was able to do my original batch in in that small kitchen after that I, I couldn't hand make it anymore it was just impossible to hand make so I actually worked with a co-packer and and I think I got really lucky that I nailed the proportions on the first try because I've talked to many people in the beverage industry it usually takes like three or four goes until you get that like scaling um, paste and perfection and I, I nailed it at the first try so I tweaked it along the way but it, it, it took literally one try I think I got very lucky well, that's extremely lucky, and <laughs> most people don't hit something on the first try and make it work. Um, no, it, it was a it was a pretty it was a pretty intense day because I I actually didn't bring cardamom. I actually brought a different herb altogether. It was it was a nightmare, but my husband came through and he was able to get me what I needed for the for the production run. It was it was it was crazy. It was a crazy day. So we have about three minutes left, and I don't want to be narcissistic as opposed to empathetic. So Tracy, please ask some questions. Oh, I'd be happy to. I'm so excited <laughs> to talk about this with you. So, first of all, I, I would just want to reiterate, that is a huge deal when working with a co-packer. Um, I worked one time with a client who we launched a cookie line for, and we a, we had to go through so many different co-packers to get it right, because we were using his mm -hmm. grandmother's recipes that he had on an index card with a coffee stain on it, literally. <laughs> so, congratulations. Um, and one of the things that we found challenging as my client and I, as I was walking him through this process, was that transition between working with a co-packer and then scaling it to the degree that you can meet the demand of uh, and distribution and meet that demand. Is that something that you face? Um, I'm still going to continue with small batches. Um, I do maybe um, five to eight hundred bottle batches per run to control the quality because um, the drink is made with um, fresh mint and so it's a pretty cumbersome process. It's a two-day process and I think if I go larger than 800 um, bottle batches at a time, I would lose the flavor and the consistency of the product. So. I would I would still be doing 800 whether I'm doing like four 800 batches a day I'm still going to be doing them in short and small batches for quality right and so um, as the supply and the demand meet so I guess that's what you're saying is that you'll still be doing small batches but you just might increase doing multiple small batches exactly correct correct well, I love yeah, the idea that you're still focused on the, I love the idea that you're doing the small batches and focusing on the freshness because it's very congruent with the philosophy of the Ayurveda medicine philosophies and, and yours, yours yourself, I'm sure. Exactly, exactly. Um, even having a drink that's high pressure pasteurized, I, it, uh, it took me a while to wrap my, my mind around it and I had to, again, I did like a year of like, giving the drink and testing it and making sure that it still had its medicinal properties intact versus the, the raw unpasteurized product that my clients were drinking. And do you distribute um, primarily locally or do you sell online? I'm currently in a transition. Um, I did rebrand the product recently, so I'm in transition of getting the distribution and going online. Everything should be coming together by the end of this month. Oh, that's very exciting. Well, we've got a lot. So um, I don't mean to interrupt, but we're taking a break. We'll be right back. KHS 1220 98.1 FM with Dr. Nikita Patel, or excuse me, Nikita Patel. If you have a business problem, 
If someone doesn't honor their agreement and you need an aggressive attorney with over 27 years experience, the law office of Peter Bronstein has helped partners resolve disputes, franchisees resolve disputes, and other business owners who have a challenge. Let the law office of Peter Bronstein take your stress away. Visit LACorporateAttorney.com. Don't wait too long and lose your rights. Solve your business challenge problem today. Visit LACorporateAttorney.com. This is Bradley from Santa Clarita Grocery, the all-volunteer grocery program serving children, families, and individuals experiencing food insecurities. Since January 2020, Santa Clarita Grocery has distributed 83 tons of fresh groceries to 4,465 families in the SCV. Santa Clarita Grocery is a drive-up, drive-through service with physical distancing in place to continue serving our community. If you are in need or looking for a charity to do the most good for our community, please consider partnering with us by donating to Santa Clarita Grocery, one of the most efficient charities in the Santa Clarita Valley. A full 99 cents out of every dollar goes directly back to the community. Santa Clarita Grocery operates on a 1% overhead and is sustained through private donations. Santa Clarita Grocery is at 21176 Center Point Parkway in the Oasis Furniture Parking Lot. Please visit our website, SantaCaritaGrocery.org, or our Facebook at Santa Clarita Grocery to make a difference in our awesome town community. 661 425 7575. Be our guest and experience the difference. These days, it's hard to figure out how to fill all the self isolation time, let alone figure out what to have for lunch or dinner. Salt Creek Grill owner Greg Amsler is helping us out in a big, big way. Salt Creek is now offering takeout and curbside pickup, so you don't even have to get out of your car. Their entire menu is available for pickup or delivery, including to-go beer and wine. Hey, In addition, Greg's offering wine at 25% off along with daily specials. If you'd like to buy a gift card for a future visit, now's the time. Buy a $50 gift card and get $10 extra dollars on the card completely free. Buy a $100 gift card, you get an extra $25. Bucks. Salt Creek Grill, located next to Regal Cinema at the Valencia Mall. For more info, go to saltcreekgrill.com. Our trash has got to go somewhere, and Chiquita Canyon Landfill is helping make the Santa Clarita Valley a little greener. Our local landfill creates clean energy from our waste disposal to power 10,000 homes each year. With their 9.2 megawatt clean energy facility harnessing the landfill's methane gas, you can feel good that the waste from your home in the SCV is helping create a clean energy source. Chiquita Canyon Landfill is our partner in sustainable living. Chiquita Canyon is helping lead the way to a greener future. Loss of hearing can affect the quality of life. Santa Clarita Hearing Center can help. They specialize in both preventative hearing loss and corrective measures, including diagnostic tests, new technology hearing aids, cochlear implants, hearing protection, and tinnitus treatment. They can adjust your current hearing aids or fit you for new ones. Santa Clarita Hearing Center also offers sleep molds, swim molds, and musician monitors. Book an appointment today. Log on to SantaClaritaHearingCenter.com. Located on McBean Parkway next to the hospital. That's SantaClaritaHearingCenter.com. <laughs> Hometown, your hometown station. Yes, 1220 and 98.1 FM. Wow. Where do you get that little uh, thing there? How do you get that voice going there? That was pretty I good. J- it just magically happens. All right. Well, we're with my co-host, Tracy Long DeForge, and our guest today is Nikita Patel. Uh, Tracy, you had a couple questions and you want to do some follow-up, so let's go. You're on. Okay. Go. So oh. Thank you. Um, so one of my favorite things to talk about is rebranding, and that was something that you had mentioned right before the break. Can you tell us a little bit about the process of the rebranding and what the uh, what was the motivation for you from the how you started to what you're rebranding to? 
Sure. Um, I started the company as um, Nutrition is Today's Intelligence, so that is my LLC, and I've kept my LLC. I'm not changing Nutrition is Today's Intelligence. It's actually an acronym of my name, NITI, N-I-T-I. So um, the drink originally was, it had NITI on it, N-I-T-I, nutrition, and then like a side panel with Nutrition is Today's Intelligence. Um, but unfortunately, people just assume that I, I just put in my name on a bottle. And um, it was very hard to communicate what the brand standard for nutrition is today's intelligence. And so I chose to leave that behind and go for something that's more lifestyle driven and that I can basically get the message out on a bottle, literally a message on the bottle. Forget in the bottle, now it's on the bottle. And so wellness on the go. So my drink is now called Drink W-O-T-G, Wellness on the Go. And that's so my customers or my clients or whoever's passing by the drink will know, okay, what is, they can look into it more. It's like wellness on the go. What's the next step? Or what is it? It'll, it'll track them better than just like NITI on a bottle. Does that make sense? Right. It's oh, absolutely. Well, and I think... And I would think too that that is a, that has so much action and movement to it that that exactly. everyone is looking right now for wellness on the go. Like that, we're all so busy. We have such chaotic schedules, and nutrition and wellness and self care have a tendency, at least in my world, to fall to the back burner. The clients and husbands and family and everything come before that a lot of times. So I think exactly. that is a powerful shift, and I'm sure it's going to be super efficient for you. So. As the name Wellness on the Go implies, is this a drink that you would have as a supplement to your normal diet? Is it a meal replacement? And and then what is the best time of day to drink it for optimal effects? All great questions. So, again, like I said, I spent a couple of years testing out the product and making sure that my customers and clients had benefits. From their feedback, you don't need to change anything in your diet. You can It can simply be a beverage of choice. Um, I have clients who drink it during the day. I had clients who drank it midday, clients who drank it in the evening, and they all receive benefits. So there's no, there's no schedule as to when you need to drink it. It doesn't need to follow a strict diet plan is just something to help you feel better and help you heal naturally without disrupting your day, which is why the wellness on the go is so important. I think many times people feel when they have to like take care of themselves that they have to like put everything else on pause, right? Like like you mentioned, taking care of your kids, your husband, the work, but this is something that you can do while you're doing all of that. It doesn't stop your day. It's something that can just make your day better by giving you clean energy healing your body, reducing inflammation primarily. That's the biggest goal of the drink. Well, so I'm not trying to make this about me, but I'm going to for a second. Go for and it. Go that for is it. Because, um, I, you know, because I always do. Um, <laughs> so this, <laughs> this will be my second um, interview with a registered dietitian in the last 24 hours. So I think wow. the universe, <laughs> I do think that the universe is trying to tell me something because I suffer from chronic headaches that often escalate into migraines. So if you were to make a recommendation, hypothetically speaking, for someone who mm-hmm. might struggle with these issues like I do, um, what would you recommend and do you think that this drink would be helpful for me? <laughs> I think the drink would be extremely helpful for you. So the drink is designed and repair the liver. And when your liver is working optimally, you're actually sending the right signals throughout your whole body. And that inflammation and all of that stress that we accumulate can now get decreased because our liver is doing its job better. So if you would like, and I would love to do, I would love to send you a case of the drink and get your feedback. Uh, that would be a definite yes, and I will be sure to make that, to send you my address, whatever you need, because I have <laughs> truly been, <laughs> I have truly been, I mean, as recently as the last week, I started working with a medical intuitive, that, and then my uh, stepson is, uh, he went to the Ayurvedic Institute in Albuquerque, 
so oh, wow. he is um, he's so passionate about uh, the same work that you do. And uh, but you know sometimes when it's family, they don't really want to, especially when it's a stepmom. I guess they don't really want to exactly you know delve into your <laughs> medical business, if you will. So um, yeah, sometimes but, you, you need some privacy. That's what all it is. He's just respecting exactly. your privacy. I just think that I just think it makes him incredibly uncomfortable. So I'm, I'm not going to put him in that situation. <laughs> but um, so if you have someone that is, uh, you know, like an, a, a typical just busy person, because I think we all fall into that category to some degree. What are mm-hmm. some of the things that you can recommend if you had to choose three things to tell a business owner? Um, you know, just a, a person with a really hectic schedule, let's say, because mm-hmm. now a lot of parents are are at home with their kids going to school from home. Their jobs have shifted to be remote. There's so much chaos going on in in the news and in the world. So it, as an underlying element, we're all feeling some level of chaos. So what would be three things that you would choose um, to recommend for someone who is on the go but needs some self-care in, in their routine? Well, the first thing is water intake. So going back to your headaches, it also could be a combination of dehydration. A small amount of dehydration can give you mental fatigue as well as irritability and headaches. So, And I think many of us fall into that category of being dehydrated, whether we're over-consuming caffeine or in a dehydrated state. So the first thing is water. And you should start your day with water or my drink because my drink is very hydrating and nourishing. Second is we don't have a lot of time for to eat, especially as a busy person. So use that as a tool to redirect your mentality instead of saying, I can't eat, change it to, I'm going to do intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is when you do a fast from 12 for 12 hours to maybe 16, 17 hours. But 12 hours is plenty. So let's say you stop eating at 8.30 and you start eating your next meal at 8.30 a.m. That's an intermittent fast. So instead of saying, I can't eat, it's a great way of saying, I'm taking care of myself actually by not eating. And when I do break my fast, I'm just going to have something light. I don't even have to have a big meal at 8.30 because I want to wait to have my largest meal during noon or lunchtime. So it's a, it's, a, it's a way that you're shifting the way you're thinking versus thinking like, oh, I, I'm not eating. Be like, I'm actually taking care of myself, and I'm eating systematically. I'm, I'm eating with a purpose. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. So, so, it's, so it's, for me, it's, it's a really great way to, to change your mindset into from negative to positive, in my, in my opinion. And, and I love what you said about it being t- that 12 hours is enough because I've I've read a lot and I've, I've experimented with intermittent fasting myself and I thought it had to be 16 and those last couple hours are brutal. 16 is like a push. It's a push. So when you want to get those deep days in, you can do 16 for maybe a day or two. But um, from a me- medical perspective, you'll get great benefits from 12 hours. The real, the real, the real thing is, is that you don't want to be binge eating at night when you're when you do have time for yourself. So. Right, and then you don't want to feel guilty or like deprived when you don't have the time to eat in the morning. So, I know there's a lot of medical perspectives, like um, from for intermittent fasting. I'm trying to say, just make yourself feel better about it. Does that like just well, feel I- good about your decision? <laughs> Well, I have to say, I feel like you're reading my mind because basically I will skip breakfast, eat like maybe a banana for lunch because I'm busy, and then it's like all about the dinner for me. <laughs> well, maybe we, maybe you need to make the lunch your biggest meal. Make your lunch your biggest meal. That way you have energy throughout the day. That would be my yeah, biggest well, Who has time? So going back and to the market. I was going to say, do, yeah. we, do we get to our third point? The third suggestion, hydration. My third suggestion, fasting. hydration. Um, keep fruit as your snack. That way you're always hydrated. It's a quick way to get full, have some nutrients, not be hungry, but you're also getting a good amount of water intake from natural fruit, fresh fruit. Oh, okay. Those so are my fresh things. fruit. Mm-hmm. And so I want to ask you um, about sugar because I understand sure. that sugar is highly addictive. Okay, again, I'm, I'm just asking for a friend. <coughs> so I, I, I told you not to bring up my name, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just, you know, I, I, 
I don't have any other vices except for work and, and eating sugar. So um, I'm just revealing it all to you here. Uh, so is sugar really as bad for you as they say? And is it better, I guess, natural sugar versus cane sugar versus processed foods with sugar? How does that all differentiate? So you always want to try to get the most natural form of sugar. So sugars are carbohydrate. Our brain needs carbohydrates to function uh, efficiently throughout the day. It just We need carbohydrates. It's a matter of getting those highly processed sugars that are going to cause the inflammation. But the sugar from fruit, the sugar from vegetables is not going to call, give you a hard time. Your body knows what to do with it, and your body needs it. It's those added sugars that don't make any sense white sugar, the flour, the white flour, those are the things that cause inflammation in the body that your body doesn't know what to do with. It, it, we're, not, we're not designed to process that much. Oh, man, I've been looking for somebody to tell me that cake is okay, and no one will tell me that cake is okay. Tracy, <laughs> cake is okay. Eat it. Have in cake, moderation. eat it too. In moderation, do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do it, the enjoy it, and don't feel guilty, it. and let it go. <laughs> the engineer well, says I'm he has a Twinkie started. every day. <laughs> well, I'm already starting to realize what the problems with my with my liver are. Um, moderation problems with my liver involve moderation <laughs> and probably some other catalysts that affect your liver. And just you know, yeah. So um, inflammation is something that I f I feel like you're not even sure it's happening to you. What are some of the symptoms of inflammation in your body? Um, a lot of the symptoms are just plain stress. Even um, irritability is a sign of inflammation. Many people feel inflammation in their joints. They'll feel it in their back. They'll feel it with headaches. Those are all signs of inflammation. But a lot of inflammation symptoms are so silent. They're, they're silent. So the, the best advice that I can give is to eat foods, a well-balanced diet, to prevent inflammation induced just from your diet. Do you take the drink every and day? Turmeric is. I'm sorry, Tim. Yeah. Do you? you? Yeah, I was gonna say, do you drink your own medicine? That's <laughs> what <I'm talking> about. <laughs> yes, I do drink my own medicine. Unfortunately, it's like you know the cook who doesn't eat their own food. After some time, I have to take a break, and then I'm like, oh man, I need my drink again. So yesterday, I hadn't had my drink in quite some time, and it just I wasn't feeling myself. And I had my drink, and I'm like, okay, now I feel better. I just have more energy. I feel lighter. I feel cleaner. I, my my knee pain was gone. So I know my drink works for me, and 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 from majority of my clients as well. Yeah, I think the whole caffeine thing is interesting because you were saying that you could over-caffeinate yourself, and I, I'd like to understand the difference between coffee, caffeine, and tea, the caffeine and tea, because I understand it's supposed to be better for you to drink tea as opposed to coffee, and I might have said I didn't have any other vices, but I might have a coffee vice, so <laughs> I was just curious about that question. <laughs> Um, coffee definitely tends to have a higher amount of caffeine per um, eight ounce, if we're going to just look at quantity, versus like a black tea or a green tea or a white tea. So that's where the difference is comes from the caffeine standpoint. Um, teas generally tend to be better for you because they, there's much more antioxidants with that. So you're, you're getting a smaller amount of caffeine, but you're also getting the benefits of different antioxidants with the tea. Oh man, I feel some big life changes coming on. <laughs> well, one of the one of the feedback on my drink is that um, people don't feel the need to have their 3 p.m. or their afternoon coffee. That they just feel good. That they don't feel like they need that lift. You know, like a long day, you kind of feel like you need a lift around two, three o'clock. They don't feel like they need that, which is which was a really um, a really interesting feedback that I got from many. It was a consistent. It was a consistent feedback. Well, I was thinking about my well, 3 o'clock nap, can't. but, you know, I take a 3 o'clock yeah. nap. What about that? <laughs> yeah, but it's going to give you energy, so you won't need your nap anymore. Okay, well, so, which reminds me of a, no, not a nap, doesn't remind me of this, but the 3 o'clock reminded me of yet another advice I forgot to mention, which is chocolate. So, <laughs> um, so, chocolate in the afternoon is something that I typically like, because... 
I do. So how is – what are the radi- – what are the – we have about a minute left. So to educate us on seconds, the difference go between milk chocolate – Oh, okay. Milk chocolate versus dark chocolate. Go. <laughs> dark chocolate, less sugar. Um, sugar and fat and caffeine are a trifecta to make you really happy, but it's a false happy. So if you can limit your chocolate intake or do it with, like, nuts, you'll be in a better shape. You won't overtake your chocolate. We're going to be taking a break. We're listening to 1220 KHTS and 98.1 FM. We'll be right back. At Eyelid Agua Dulce, we believe the most important thing a child can learn in school is who they are. Life's real tests are never standardized, which is why we've developed an individual-based curriculum that values exploration, cooperation, and creativity. As our learners grow, so do we. Our tuition-free charter school is currently enrolling grades TK through 7th and adding 8th grade in 2020. Your young learner will be immersed in a unique environment where possibility and self-discovery are at the core of every experience. The Agua Dulce campus features beautiful indoor and outdoor spaces for hands-on inspiration, including a robotics lab, a garden bed, a greenhouse, and a technology-based exploratorium. Eyelid Agua Dulce is conveniently located on the east side of the Santa Clarita Valley, just off the 14 Freeway. Check out our homeschool options, too. To schedule a campus tour or learn more about our programs, visit eyeleadaguadulce.org. We're enrolling now. Eyelid Schools. Free to think. Inspired to lead. At the Burrito Factory, their motto has always been to serve quality food with fast, friendly service. But did I mention the taste? When it comes to authentic taste and huge mouth-watering burritos, the Burrito Factory is second to none. Whether it's lunch, dinner, or a catered event, Burrito Factory has the taste of Mexico to satisfy your craving. Burrito Factory on Soledad Canyon Road next to Chi-Chi's Pizza in Canyon Country. Stop in or call ahead, 288-0222. The coronavirus has put us in a position of creating a new normal. Family Law at Home understands. Their goal is to meet you in the safest place possible. And these days, that might be in your own home in a virtual meeting. Family Law at Home will provide you with immediate advice on your family law matters, such as divorce cases, child custody disputes, and domestic violence. It's as easy as going to FamilyLawAtHome.com. You'll choose your own consultation date and be in immediate contact with one of their esteemed attorneys. Family Law at Home handles the legal aspect while you and your family navigate the new chapter in your lives. Go to FamilyLawAtHome.com. These days, it's hard to figure out how to fill all the self-isolation time, let alone figure out what to have for lunch or dinner. Salt Creek Grill owner Greg Amsler is helping us out in a big, big way. Salt Creek is now offering takeout and curbside pickup, so you don't even have to get out of your car. Their entire menu is available for pickup or delivery, including to-go beer and wine. Hey, in addition, Greg's offering wine at 25% off along with daily specials. If you'd like to buy a gift card for a future visit, now's the time. Buy a $50 gift card and get 10 extra dollars on the card completely free. Buy a $100 gift card, you get an extra 25 bucks. Salt Creek Grill, located next to Regal Cinema at the Valencia Mall. For more info, go to saltcreekgrill.com. If you have a business problem, if someone doesn't honor their agreement and you need an aggressive attorney with over 27 years' experience, the Law Office of Peter Bronstein has helped partners resolve disputes, franchisees resolve disputes, and other business owners who have a challenge. Let the Law Office of Peter Bronstein take your stress away. Visit lacorporateattorney.com. Don't wait too long and lose your rights. Solve your business challenge problem today. Visit lacorporateattorney.com. We all know sometimes people lose their way. If you or someone you know is struggling with addiction, the Way Out Recovery SCV may have the answers you've been waiting for. The Way Out is the premier intensive outpatient treatment center serving Santa Clarita. Asking for help is the first step. Call the Way Out today, 661-296-4444. That's 296-4444 for a private free assessment. The Way Out is an accredited, affordable outpatient program that accepts most insurance. Call us at 661-296-4444 or check us out online at thewayoutrecoveryscv.com. Quit battling with yourself. Ask The Way Out for help today. It's like no other station I've ever listened to. It's great. Your your hometown station.
Welcome back. You're listening to KHS 1220 and 98.1 FM. Ask Brian Radio Show with my co-host Tracy Wong DeForge and my guest Nikita Patel. What, what are you doing? Why, why didn't you make that so loud? <laughs> I don't know what my engineer's <laughs> doing today. He just put this thing on. Okay, we're back. We're live. <coughs> we're asking you the question we had, and one of our viewers asked this question, so that's quite the pivot you made, Nikita, from going from being a nutritionist to the beverage industry. I mean, I yes, it's along the same path. Yes, you're using your nutrition background to create a beverage, but a beverage company, you know, like Coca-Cola or, or, you know, or, or, or Tropicana or whatever, is a completely different animal than being a nutritionist. So how did you do that pivot? Um, I think for me, I always thought that I should have done um, nutrition and food science. You know, um, you know, everything's always hindsight is always twenty twenty. So, I think I, I think I really always enjoyed being in a commercial kitchen. Um, through my my dietetic training at NYU, we had a big component of, you know, of. Um, of recipe production and mass production, so I was exposed to it because they had a food science program. And I and I think if I had to do it all over again, I would study nutrition, but I would do my master's in food science, so I can really understand the, being in this field it with much more depth. Did you have to secure FDA approval for Wellness to Go? No, I did not. No. And is and is that because it's beverage, not food? I'm just curious what 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 would have prevented that from being necessary? Um, it could have been an oversight on my part, but from my knowledge, I don't think I have to get FDA approval for the. Oh, I mean, beverage. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure you likely don't. I mean, I don't think you would have that level of an oversight. But I was just curious because I I know that. Um, there's often a lot of questions about the nutrition label versus the actual nutrition in there, even though it's FDA approved. That's why I was curious. Oh, so I, I had to go. I had to get my nutrition label done through an FDA approved facility that that could do the labeling. So I sent all my ingredients and the proportions, and they came up with the label, the the nutrition fact label, not myself. I have a third party who did that. I also exactly. had. Um, I also had the drink. It, it, like if you do high pressure pasteurization, you have to do a validity test to make sure that the pasteurization is, um, you know, actually doing its job and killing off whatever pathogens are in the drink. So, in that sense, I did take all those other steps, and I did work with some incubators that were able to guide me on the right steps for a beverage. How does somebody get the oh, drink? Completely. I'm sorry to interrupt. How does somebody get the drink? Mm. How does somebody get to drink? Right now, um, my engineer the wants to order 10 cases. Live. I, but I will be up and running by hopefully two weeks from now, and they can get it from my website for now at um, drinkwotg.com, and I will be able to ship nationwide. Super. We have about. Well, I'm excited 30 to get. I'm excited to get my case of drinks. Yes, I'm excited to get your feedback. I look for the feedback. I want to see what my clients and customers are feeling. I love it. Well, um, well, I think we're wrapping up, but I just really appreciate you taking, um, you probably felt assaulted at, like at a cocktail party with me asking you all that medical information, but I do really appreciate no, your it. feedback. <laughs> I appreciate all the questions. I appreciate your time. Thank you for having me today. And we want to bring you back, uh, you know, maybe six months a year to see how far you've progressed and how it's going and what, what more advice you have for business owners, how they can uh, get in and make that big, big pivot. So thank you very much. Oh, yeah, I would love that. That'd Super. Be great. Listen to KHS 1220 and 98.1 FM. Thank you very much. Have a great week. We'll be back next week.